Hey, good morning everybody and welcome to the vlog. I hope the start of your day is absolutely incredible. You know, I'm going to start my day with a little time with my guy Al Machino here. You know, the fact is, is that now that we're not open to the public, we have to spend a lot of time continuing to socialize these animals and spending time with them because again, we know we're going to be opened up again in the future and if for some reason these animals aren't used to being handled, uh, our business model isn't going to work too well, right? So I'm just going to take some time and kind of do my rounds. I'm typically spending time with Al. I'm just Spend time with Perdita, Night Fury, Salt and Pepper, of course, all the rhino iguanas, Tiana, you know, all those animals. Every day we have to spend time with them. Of course, Bruce and Jessica and Andrea do a great job with a bunch of stuff as well. So my day is going to start with this beautiful Machino reticulated python. And I tell you what, I'm not complaining to start my day with such an awesome snake. You guys know that one of the highlights of the day is obviously to come down here and go on a little Easter egg hunt, right? I look through all these animals and hopefully find some clutches of eggs. Again, it never gets old. I've been doing this for. A long time and so every time I open that tub and see those pearly whites I get excited so hopefully we'll get some ball python clutches today Oh my gosh, guys, take a look at this. Oh, this is that Lori Leopard Ball Python, bred to a Lori Ball Python. Remember last year, that blue and silver snake? Guess what crawled out of the egg? That's right, that super incredible, amazing animal, one of a kind, a super Lori Ball Leopard. Woohoo, doggy! This was the mom here, and she only had like five eggs last year, and we hatched out that Super Lori Leopard pinstripe. So we have a shot at another one, maybe even a couple. Look at how many eggs she has! Woohoo, doggy! I tell you what, that is one impressive clutch, and mama is not happy right now. It's okay, mom. You're okay, mom. I'm just gonna release her. Oh my gosh, this is a huge clutch of eggs! Oh, man, I cannot even believe this girl has this many eggs. I knew she was gonna have a lot of eggs because she was swollen up, but boy, oh boy, that is perfect. And I love, again, that's the size eggs you really want. This may be the record clutch for the year for sure, at least up until now. Oh my gosh, I cannot believe how many eggs are. I'm gonna just take this one little egg over here. The rest are piled up beautifully, but wow. I only had like five eggs and I produced that Super Lori Leopard last year. That was so amazing. So let's go ahead and get these eggs out of here. Mama, you did such a good job. Woo, they can barely fit in there. Oh my gosh, she is amazing. She looks really good. I mean, she's definitely beat up. She laid a lot of eggs, which is completely fine. We'll get her cleaned up and get her all ready. Most of the snakes that have laid eggs this year have already went back on food. I think out of all the females that have laid, only one is not eating, so that is a great sign. Let's take a look. I mean, I am blown away here, guys. That's two, four, six, eight, 10, 12 eggs, oh doggy. Last year our biggest clutch was 13 eggs. This is 12 eggs, by far the biggest clutch so far this year. And I tell you what, if I was gonna choose one female to lay, that would be the female to lay a 12 egg clutch. So there could be two, three, maybe even four of those blue little monkeys in this clutch. Oh my gosh, 57 days from now, guys, we're gonna get a chance to cut this clutch and let's hope we produce some more Super Lori Leopards. Oh my gosh, I am over the moon excited about this. 12 eggs. This is amazing. Look at Sunfire just up on the perch like that. That is incredible. As a matter of fact, that really reminds me of the only time I've ever seen retics in the wild was on an island called Laban Baju at a place called Ustana Ular. And uh, we actually saw some retics in a cave. And uh, it reminded me a lot of this. They didn't have the branches obviously, but they certainly were up on that wall like that. And that is just stunning right there. As a matter of fact, if you want to hear more about that story, I think I'm going to share it this week on the podcast, Checking In. I'll definitely put a link in the description to Checking In. Go show that some love. And maybe I'll share the entire crazy story of my trip to Indonesia just to find a retic in a bat cave. I'm happy to tell you that we're about a week into the new Cayman Lizards enclosure. And guess what? They're both still in there. They haven't gotten away. And of course, uh, we've got mangoes in here somewhere. Where I'm not exactly sure where it is, but this one right here is the female, and it doesn't have that orange head, so we decided, as a matter of fact, someone suggested it. I thought it was amazing. We're gonna name her Kiwi. So we have Kiwi, and we have Mango in here. And actually, Andrew, a little bit later, is gonna see if they can get him to eat. Now, Mango took a little bit of time adjusting to the enclosure, but started to eat, whereas Kiwi has only eaten 
one little small meal. So let's hope that maybe today Andrew will have some luck getting these monkeys to eat. The season is definitely heating up. We're producing a lot of eggs this time of year, of course. So we have a bunch of clover clutches to pull today, which is always fun. This is just actually a het creamsicle scaleless corn snake right here. And that creamsicle is just kind of got a little bit of emery blood in it. So it doesn't look as red and orange as a normal snake. It has more of that tan color. And of course, that's where the creamsicle blood originally started. And she's just bred to the exact same thing. So these are both het creamsicle scaleless. It doesn't look like a really beautiful clutch. It's okay, that's for sure. Now the creamsicle stuff actually does produce a little bit less eggs as well, as well as the scaleless stuff to be totally honest with you. So it's not surprising that there's not more eggs, but we got two little sluggers here, four good eggs. And a lot of that like more original scaleless stuff had the fertility issues. You guys remember from years past where we'd have about 50% fertility. Now our new scaleless stuff is 100% fertile, really doing well. These are some of the kind of leftovers from a while ago. So four eggs to start the day. Next clutch is actually a head albino scaleless corn snake. Let's hope that the fertility is a little bit better on this one. We'll kind of pull her down, see what she's got going on. Oh, nope, that's a terrible clutch. So we have been just crushing it with colubrids this year. This is the first big disappointment. Looks like the entire clutch is actually infertile. Not even one fertile egg in here. Look at that, guys. Oh. That is brutal. There's two, four, six, eight infertile eggs. Not even one fertile egg. I mean, but you know, that's the thing, guys. I mean, I take you guys on the good, the bad, the ugly, and everything else like this. The truth is when you're breeding snakes, or really any animal for that matter, you have successes and you have failures. And I'm not gonna show you just the successes. I'm gonna show you the ups and downs. And again, we're having an amazing year, and I know we're gonna have an amazing year. But the truth is, is that sometimes you hit a little bit of a, a road bump like this here. So uh, what can you do? Let's move on to the next clutch. Moving on to what hopefully will be a good clutch this time. This is actually a mosaic cow king. These guys are beautiful. Definitely unbelievably incredible king snakes. This is the male, by the way, that's bred it right here. The male mosaic California king snake. Let's see what the female has. Yes, much better clutch for sure. She's uh, She's got them a little bit, little bit all over the place. So we're just going to kind of remove her easily as we can. We're going to have to candle all these eggs because she's just kind of flopping them around. And that just happens. Again, we always candle stuff when they're not in a clump. Uh, uh, these weren't laid in a clump and she was moving stuff around. So let's just go ahead, put her back. We'll get her all cleaned up and we'll see how many eggs are actually in this clutch here. Let's see, we've got two right here. And again, we'll just candle everything, even the ones that are stuck together, just to be safe. We've got three, four, five, six. Looks like six good eggs, and these two are definitely not good. So six good eggs, two little sluggers. So for whatever reason, we're hitting a little infertile patch here. But again, six good eggs and two, still pretty good fertility, to be honest with you. So we'll candle these guys, get them set up, and we'll move on to the next clutch. Turtles are getting more brazen. They're starting to come up quite a bit. So pretty soon, uh, I think they're gonna come up because again, when we open back up, we wanna make sure that kids can feed these turtles. So we've been working on socializing them. Uh, not there yet, but getting better every day. Of course, the little basilisk lizards are settling in so wonderfully. These things are so cool. I cannot wait till they get bigger uh, and they are, chowing like you can't believe. So I'm gonna go ahead, and just throw some crickets in here and watch these little monsters hunt because they are little raptors. I mean, they are amazing. Let's see how they do. Well, that was a little underwhelming. I'm not gonna lie to you. I expected just the, the craziness, but what's happening is not only the fact that we've been feeding them so much, they're not quite as crazy as when we first got them where they were just attacking crickets like crazy, but also the cage is just so well planted. To be honest with you, what they keep on doing is diving behind and eating. So uh, nevertheless, they are doing well. I promise you they're eating really well. Uh, as a matter of fact, you can see there's, they're, they're pooping pretty well too. So regardless, uh, we'll get some good footage in the future. I promise you that. It's been a couple weeks since I've done a giveaway. So today I figured go ahead in the comments let me know uh, why I should give you a little Matilda plushie and we have all the stuff all the plushies the posters and everything at the reptarium.com I'll put a link down in the description but in the meantime uh, comment down below if you'd like this little cute Matilda's plushie take a look at guys really quick I'm gonna just slowly open this up it's 
a female that's just finishing her clutch of eggs here. I'm gonna let her go because she might have one egg left in her, but that's actually a het sunset bred to another het sunset, so I could potentially brew some sunsets. We'll come back to this later in the day because again, I think she might be done. She was literally just laying her last egg that I see coming out, but there might be one left in there, so we'll give it a little bit. We'll come back to her and see if there's any other clutches today as well. Although the one girl isn't done laying, we do have another clutch right here. This is actually just another pastel female. Looks like she's around a beautiful clutch of eggs. And she was actually bred to a pewter lesser. And that's this little stud muffin right here. He's actually been breeding really good. We've already gotten a couple clutches from him really good. So it's a pastel, it's a cinnamon, and it's a lesser. They sometimes call these lithium ball pythons. And by breeding this guy to the female, we could actually get super pastel lithiums or super pastel cine lessers and stuff like that. So let's go ahead and see how many eggs she has. And here we go. Again, she's a really pretty animal. And it uh, looks like she's got a beautiful clutch. We're just going to take her off real quick. Here you go, Mama. You're okay. Look at those eggs. Wow. That's a nice, beautiful clutch. I, again, I love when they have this size of eggs right here, where they're not huge eggs, but they're big enough to be good. You know they're going to have really nice, healthy, big babies, but they're not so it's big eggs where there's a smaller number. So it's kind of the perfect size clutch right here as far as the eggs go. We'll just get these last few eggs in here, see how many she has. She did, oh, you did good, Mama. It's okay. You don't have to bite me, please. There we go. And we'll get Mama all cleaned up and stuff like that. She looks absolutely amazing. And like I always say, I always want to check to see the health of the animal. Make sure there's no egg retained, all that type of stuff. So we've got two, four, six, seven beautiful eggs. Again, we'll go ahead and pull that other clutch of this female later on today. Next up is, of course, some of the favorite ones here. And of course, that's a Mexican black king snake. Let's go ahead and see what this Mama has going on down here. Come on, Mama. Okay, looks like a good clutch of eggs. Again, we have a new group of Mexican black king snakes up this year, so they're all first time breeders, and they're definitely small, but look at how absolutely gorgeous that snake is. Uh, took a lot of energy out of that girl, so we're definitely gonna wanna get some water in with her, get some food into her as quickly as we can, because these are some big eggs right there. Take a look at these ones. Of course, there are two, four, five eggs. Not too bad. Bigger girls can have eight or 10 eggs, but first year females, oftentimes four to six eggs is pretty typical. So right in the wheelhouse there. So uh, fertility good on this one, uh, heading in the right direction. And then the last colubri clutch of the day is actually an albino jelly Brooks king snake. Oh, she's already out of the box, but look at how beautiful these things are. I mean, that is a gorgeous snake right there. And it's just bred to the exact same thing. So the male looks just like that female. Let's see what kind of eggs we have today. Oh my gosh, holy moly. That's a lot of eggs. I mean, that really, that shocked me. I wasn't expecting anything like this. That is a lot of eggs. We've got two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18 eggs. That is a huge clutch for sure. So, hey, the day didn't start out all that great when it came to eggs, but it ended amazing on a huge clutch like that. So uh, all in all, I think it was a pretty awesome day of collecting eggs. So actually, we're gonna feed kiwi and mango today, our caiman lizards, let's see how it goes. Mango's been eating amazing for the past few weeks, but now that we have kiwi in here, it's nice to see her actually eating a big meal for the first time. So we'll keep you guys updated how things progress with them. It was really cool to see her perch out on the glass. Maybe we can train her to keep doing that in the future. Okay, so back to this girl that was laying a little earlier. Oh, she came off a couple eggs over here. That's kind of interesting. And again, this is a head sunset, just bred to another head sunset. So we're definitely gonna need to candle this egg here. We're gonna need to candle this egg here. Definitely have one little infer leg. Not exactly sure what that's from. And then, oh God, these eggs are so loose and so weird. 
Let's see, she's only coiled around. Let's see, come on, mom, give these eggs up. I'm gonna candle this whole clutch because it's definitely a disaster and stuff like that. Looks like we've got one more slug egg here, another good egg here. Let's go ahead, get this out. Mama, you did a good job, girl. And hopefully with any luck, we'll again, produce some sunset stuff this year. That would be absolutely amazing. Again, been a long time and uh, definitely a wild, rocky road with that project. But nevertheless, hopefully this year we get right back on the horse over here. Again, we'll check and candle these eggs right here. Looks like we've got a little boob egg right here, but we've got two, four good eggs two slugs, no big deal. So the girl ended up doing relatively good after all. We'll go ahead, candle these eggs, get them in the incubator, get this girl cleaned up and uh, get her back onto food and ready for next year. I tell you what, egg cutting season is just around the corner and the clutches today, in particular that Lori Leopard, that could potentially produce that super Lori Leopard. Oh my gosh. As a matter of fact, if you enjoyed it, uh, here's an entire playlist of egg cutting to get your fix beforehand. Over here, you can subscribe to that podcast channel I was telling you about. On this side, you can subscribe to the vlog channel. I sure do appreciate it. Have an absolutely wonderful day. Remember to be kind to someone, and I promise I'll see you guys tomorrow.